so hi all in this video we are going to discuss how to move this joint okay so basically i have used gazebo and made a model called t model and inside this you can see this three links okay so this this link is basically fixed joint and the second one that we are going to move by using our plugin that's a revolute joint and you can see the naming over here and this naming is very very important because if you want to control any of this joint you have to name know the perfect naming right how this naming is formed this is a combination of this model name plus the joint name so first one is the model name then the joint name same as we have also seen in the previous video so this video is basically based on a very good documentation on gazebo how to set the joint velocities so you can see this documentation and they have very good daily mention all the things in very much detail I really like this documentation and you can read the advantage and disadvantage of the, all the three methods over here now let's discuss how to basically get the gazebo name that's very very important so there are two methods to get the naming of this by using the number count using this get joint and otherwise just by using the name so if you see the number method over here basically if there are there is some model like this and it has got three joints so to get the name of this what you have to do use that get joint method joints method and you have to count the number 0 1 2 3 so to get this joint name you have to give the number over here so if you want the zero number then you will write zero if you want the one then you have to write now this is not a very useful method it's very inconvenient to remember the numbers of a model okay so joint numbers so this is not majorly used but it is a method so i told you the other methods that easy to get is that you do not need to count the numbers basically you just need to remember the name of that so if you want to use the link 0 then just use the joint number 0 if you want to use the joint 1 then just write over here as joint 1 that's it you will be able to get this naming and the best part of this is that it's helpful to call a other function you do not need to store it as a data member what you can do you can directly use this part and call another function to set that joint like you can see that set velocity is there so this is a function you can directly use this part to call this function using the pointer so this makes it very useful so all the details of apis i have given over here you can go and read them now now we understand how to get the joint now let's see how to control those joint how to actually move them so there are three methods that you can see over here velocity instantaneously and using joint motors then the third one is using the PID controllers if you can see from this animation over here this first method the link is going to completely move with the joint so we are just controlling the joint but our link is also moving with this method like that there are two other methods and those are getting very smoothly their links are not moving so this joint causes to unstationary that's what the official documentation says but what i have noticed over here is that that depends on how you have created a model so when i will be discussing my model you won't see this error on our model rather you will see this kind of error in the next two methods so that is basically relative you have to see this that depends on the model and its mechanical properties so if you see the first method over here that's very simple we have used this to get the model just the simple way and now we have just set that velocity and there are two parameters over here the second one if you are using this are the SI units okay so if you are using a prismatic joint then it will be meter per second then it will be radian per second if you are using a revolute joint and this first one is important if you are using robotics and urdf things then you will be basically using three types of joint prismatic revolute and fixed so in case of this this got only one axis so this represent the axis so if you are using revolute or prismatic joint then it will always be a zero but if you are using revolute joint 
टू और स्क्रू जॉइंट यूनिवर्सल जॉइंट देन यू कैन सी द नंबरिंग ओवर हेयर सो दिस इज कॉल्ड टू एक्सेस बट दैट वी बेसिकली डो नॉट यूज इन वेल यूजिंग यू आर डिज इफ यू नो वॉट आई मीन नाउ सेम वे देर इज अदर मैथड एंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल यू दिसवाटेज ऑफ दिस मैथड नंबर वन दैट इट मे मूव लाइक दिस ओके नाउ द सेकेंड मैथड इज will be using the joint motors to control this so we'll be setting the parameters like maximum force and velocity so this pa those two parameters that we are going to set and the same thing is there this axis one is there then these are the values on si units so if you are setting the force then you will be having the force if you are setting the velocity this value will be velocity now the good advantage of this is that you can directly do it in a single line and and it will control the joint but if you see on the third method then what it is you have to keep on updating it but on the second method you do not need to keep on updating okay that's the advantage advantage of this and other advantage you can directly read from this given in very much detail now there is one thing to keep in mind that even i found the second method to be little bit buggy while i was making this tutorial for this then i found the second and third method was little bit problematic for me to even set this so you have to hit and trial this to understand how to set this it's basically depend on the model i will tell you a little bit more on this so what the second method force while you're setting this force you have to keep in mind is that that this parameter you have to give it in float not as integer so this will give you a runtime error and this won't give you any error so you have to keep this one thing in mind as well and now comes the third method that's pid control so you have to give the pid's values on to this okay and you have to keep on updating it to make it move and apis and all as i have given in detail now let's see the plugin so what i have done i have just created a ros package named joint control plugin okay now i have opened this in visual studio code let me first show you the model then we we'll discuss this code so this is the world file and you see over here i have just imported this model and if you remember from model plugin i have discussed where to put your plugin as well so i have just included this so where it would be it would be within the model.sdf so if you go on this model model.sdf then you will find the plugin over here so this is that model that i have used gazebo model editor to create it okay so this is that model and i have imported my plugin over here wherever you put you start at the port or at the end of you where you want you can put it just the idea is that it should be within the model okay if it's a model plugin so basically we are writing a model plugin okay now this whole things are that same just you need to understand that it it will be in model.sdf because we have included this as a model so this is a kind of a custom model that's why we have we have to give it within the sdf okay now let's come to the coding of it now let's discuss the code so as you can see over here this whole things are as well same that we are doing from so many videos now as we are going to create a model plugin basically that's why we have inherited this model plugin i am just named this joint control plugin okay now this load function is there same model pointers are there and sdf is there now i have stored this model pointer as you know now the important thing and interesting thing come over here that i just told you so as we need the naming perfectly so that we can move this okay so we have to get the name perfectly so there are two method that we right now discuss by name and by number so as you see on this model so if you go by the number then it would be a zero number then it would be a first number so as we are going to control this so that i have to name it as one i have to give the number as one and the joint name is joint one okay so this method is more easy i am just printing it out and i am just i am printing the whole scoped name it will get us the full name of this okay so that's why so that we can understand by both the method we are going to get the same name it's just the method okay now here the update connection start and on update is going to start that we already know and this on update it keep on rotating and this will keep on moving 
and here I have declared the private members. Now this method one is very easy. What I have done, I have just used this model pointer and instead of by storing this over here, I have just directly called this entirely using this join name. So this part is there and then it is calling this set velocity. So this is zero because we are having a revolute joint and I have given it to radian per second. So this is the speed of the joint. Angular velocity basically. So now let's try and move this. I have already kept it built and the details of this how to launch this that I have already given you. In the git repository you know how to access this already. Now we are going to launch the joint launch. And if you see this, this is within this joint. I'm calling this world. That's it. Now, as you can see over here, the important thing first you notice is by number and by name. So both are getting us the same name. So hence you understood that they are just the method and you are getting the same name from the both the method. Now you can see this model is moving and with the radian speed that we have provided to it of 2.0. That's it in this first method now let's discuss the second method let me quickly comment it out and the important thing of this second method is that with first method as they were saying that your model is going to not move properly but if you have seen my model it was moving perfectly but when i am going to test this on the second you will see that space is going to move up so that's basically depend on how you have defined the model even if I show you the model file, you can see over here, this is just having a visual tag on it. I have not added collision tag and inertia because before recording this video, I was testing this out and I I had very difficulty to try out with this two method number two and method number three. So I have just removed the inertia and so whenever you activate the dynamic properties of it, then it is going to again get very much complicated even if your code is right then I, then even you are going to face the problem so you have to see which method works in your model and then basically apply like that okay so that's what i understood and that is what i am going to suggest to you okay now this is that force this is velocity which i have just explained this is the axis this is the values that i have given over here now let me quickly build it let's launch the model now we are going to use the second method and we are going to get the same as the output now see this model is moving quite well so it seems like there is no difference over here okay but now we have used the second method so just to make this video properly i have removed the dynamic part of it otherwise if i activate the dynamic part then it is going to have some difficulties so I've just explained you the things that is important while you are keeping things in mind and I will also suggest you to read the official documentation they have given the advantage of three of the methods very well. Now let me comment this second method and let's see the third method. Now something interesting comes with this third method. Firstly this joint control is there. Now we have to call the physics joint controller pointer and you have to define this okay so that's basically for controlling the pids now the first line what does over here is we have passed this to our joint controller that this is that model reset is firstly reset the control system and next and what you should do you should get this joint registered add this joint onto your joints controller now next get us the full name this is the that same function that we are using to print over here if you see this get named so it's, it is going to get us the full name that we basically need to control the joint to name which joint is it is and now the next thing what it does is set the velocity PID so th even setting this part is not easy trust me so this values uh, it takes a lot of time to set this PID's value so although this is the most smooth way of doing it it you will see it is going to be more smooth on rest both of this method but it's not really easy to set this PID value up now the next thing is 
we are just giving the same joint and then it's radian per second how much radian it's going to use now this is velocity target as we are using the PID so what is PID is going to have so instantly it's not going to get that uh, velocity that we have defined it will take some time using the PID it's going to slowly increase that why it's named velocity target so it has a target to reach and with this method the disadvantage is that you have to keep it updating on it but you must keep in mind that if you update it too much then it joint of your may create crash so what i've done this count is constantly increasing so i've just defined all of this in just the start of this so what i would suggest only update when you add something new on this let's rest clip it simple otherwise i was trying to update it on every iteration and my model was failing that i have seen so this this as i was saying second third method you have to try things out and understand that what works what doesn't work and you have to be clear that you may face some problems okay so i am saying you the practical thing that i faced now this is there now this velocity is just given now this keep on updating it and it will be just defined once so it just needs to be defined once within this on update you have to just define it once now whenever you keep updating that that just call update once okay so that's that simple it is now let me build it we'll see it now let's launch the model you see this is going very smooth because it has a target to reach so that's why it's going slowly slowly to that target of 0 0.1 reading okay so it may oversource so that's the disadvantage of this method and if you see three of the methods my model was constantly at this because i have just added an extra base to it so that it will be constant as well as i am not enabling the dynamics over here that's why this is going very simple it's looking very smooth okay so i told you the behind scenes as well so that's the thing so you have to little bit be careful when you are modeling this and if you are thinking how this these things are working so basically what this all the method are doing every function is there now whenever you see any of the function what basically it does it internally publishes on a gazebo topic that we already know so there are gazebo topics for this so if you want you can search that you will find the gazebo topic command while is there that's a gazebo topic which these are going to publish internally on that topic so this just this all these things just make our method easy so we do not have to write a publisher and publish it so this we have to just call these functions and those functions are going to do this work for us so i hope you really enjoyed this video series that's it in the video series thank you goodbye